my name is Jeremy Smith, um, and I'd like to show you guys a little bit of um, script I did around using disk speed uh, for some storage performance testing. So um, this is the sort of the end result script, but I'll, I'll walk it back and kind of walk you through my process of how I got here. We started with needing to, I was working with some of the, the storage guys and hardware guys. Um, I am, I'm more of a developer, so I was just kind of helping out some. Um, they basically wanted to run a whole bunch of iterations of disk speed. This is just a, a sample on an AWS instance. Um, collect some metrics and, and run that you know, 20 times maybe, um, let it rest for five minutes or so, and then collect some of these metrics. So uh, it started where you know, we were running this in from command prompt, um, picking out some of the, the pieces of information, copying that into an Excel sheet. It was all very manual. Um, and it was screaming the you know need for automation and uh, some PowerShell code. So um, started here. Um, basically, I just took the the command that we were running um, and and threw that into PowerShell. Didn't really get any win from that, uh, but started to just iterate over the process, um, looking at the parameters for disk speed. Uh, saw that there is an XML output argument. So now if I run disk speed, I think we can we can do something with the results. Because uh, PowerShell is pretty good at parsing XML. It's still a lot to, to chew through, but at least it's it's, uh, it's like machine readable. Um, so next I did a little I just wrapped some of that stuff in, in a function that actually just calls disk, disk speed with the arguments. Um, whatever whatever parameters, because we were fiddling with with modifying a bunch of these things. Um, I will skip over what this was doing. It, it's calling the like start process and then redirecting the output stream. I actually forget why we needed to do that, um, but it was not not working just calling to speed directly in certain circumstances. Um, but I didn't comment it, so now I've forgotten uh, why that was needed. So the next thing. Let me sorry. Let me go ahead and run this and grab those results into the XML value. Okay. The next thing was I needed to parse that XML. So wrote a little function um, using a lot of select XML, basically just to pull out the parameters that we were manually copying into the spreadsheet, um, just with a lot of XPath queries. So you know it's it's a little verbose, but relatively straightforward once you get the pattern down um, just grab all of these things you can see this is just a, a simple uh, script function um, it's not not put into a module or anything fancy like that uh, we just grab all these values and then throw that into a ps custom object so uh, this is kind of how the script evolved you can see all this stuff now i get this result object I'm also capturing the, the start time. So every time I invoke the function, I, I can capture the time of day that it, it ran. That's pretty handy. Um, we can see that while it's running, the, the CPU spikes up. And then now I've got actual object representation of the data I need. So this is a you know, clear step forward. The last piece of the puzzle is that we also wanted to capture the average disk queue length, which is not reported by disk speed. So when we were first doing it very manually, you know, we'd kind of monitor when did it start, when did it end, okay, kind of eyeball the value and just put something into the spreadsheet. Um, but PowerShell can do better. So I used get counter, actually grab the value, um, then we can average out the cooked values over the time that it was running. Uh, but again, still we have two two pieces of this uh, work going on. Every time we want to invoke disk speed, one time I've got to invoke disk speed with the right parameters and you know run this get counter. Um, and that's that's still manual intervention when I want this to kick off you know twenty times in a row. I don't want to have to sit there and babysit it the whole time. So. The end result is that I started the get counter in a background job. Uh, I've got a few little arguments here. So the, the duration is how long 
disk speed runs for, um, the, the warm up time uh, is kind of baked in there. Then the job runs for the total time, or it counts that many samples, or the, the samples are once every second. So it's nice that we're dealing with seconds for everything here. Uh, capture the start time, run disk speed. Meanwhile, the job is running in the background. Wait for the job to finish and grab out that um, the average of that cooked value and then set that average queue length onto my final object. When we run the whole thing here, Now it's got everything that, that we needed, including the average queue length. Um, and so then the final step was to basically just call this whole thing, um, which is actually for in a loop. So this example calls it 10 times. I invoke that whole thing. I sleep for five seconds or however long in between, let the system kind of cool down some, and then convert the results to CSV. I'll put that. Um, I, I ran that before, so we don't have to wait for you know minutes for this to run. Um, but basically, now you've got a really nice uh, data set with all the values. And you know, if you wanted to, you could um, uh, use the tab delimiter, pipe it to the clipboard. And if I had Excel installed on this VM, then you could just paste it into Excel, and and you're ready to go. So, so that's that's it. That's super cool. Thanks.